The measurements used to assess left ventricular systolic function when a patient has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are the ejection fraction and systolic strain. Often the left ventricle will be normal to hyperdynamic with regards to ejection fraction in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 2D or 3D techniques can be used to calculate an ejection fraction. the parasternal long axis, parasternal short axis, apical four-chamber view, apical two-chamber view, and apical three-chamber views can be used to visually assess the left ventricular systolic function. Two-dimensional or three-dimensional echocardiography can be used to calculate the ejection fraction. For 2D imaging, the biplane method of DISC is the preferred method for assessing left ventricular ejection fraction. Volume measurements are made from the apical four-chamber and apical two-chamber views. Apical views should be optimized for assessment of the left ventricle. The apex should be centered in the sector display and the depth should be adjusted to demonstrate the entire left ventricle, mitral valve, and a small part of the left atrium. After acquiring the image, one can use the cine clip function to scroll back and forth over the cardiac cycle to identify the border of the compacted myocardium and the blood-filled left ventricular cavity. Here, we are showing the compacted myocardium and scrolling back and forth, so we are better able to discern where the demarcation is of the compacted myocardium. Volume measurements are made by tracing the border of the compacted and non-compacted myocardium of the left ventricle chamber wall. Papillary muscles and trabecula are not included in the tracing, as these structures are considered part of the left ventricle cavity. The tracing is completed by drawing a horizontal line across the mitral valve annulus and a vertical line is drawn from the center of the mitral valve annulus to the apex of the heart. This demonstrates a correct tracing of the left ventricle end diastolic volume and end diastolic volume is estimated to be 67.27 milliliters. The same procedure is followed to trace the end systolic volume. Again, scroll back and forth to discern the compacted myocardial border of the left ventricle and the same procedures followed to trace the end systolic volume. In this example, the end systolic volume is estimated to be 27.58 milliliters. It is important to pay attention to the volumetric measurements. In this example, we see an incorrect tracing being made. The tracing is including structures of trabecula and papillary muscles as part of the compacted myocardium, and this is going to result in severe underestimation of the end diastolic volume. In this example, in the same patient, the end diastolic volume is estimated to be 36.18 milliliters. This is an example of an incorrect tracing to estimate the end systolic volume. Again, the measurement is including trabecula and papillary muscles as part of the compacted myocardium and results in a smaller estimation of the chamber volume. In this example, in the same patient, the end diastolic volume is estimated to be 36.18 milliliters. This example demonstrates the problem with incorrect measurements to estimate the end diastolic and end systolic volumes and to then use those measurements to estimate an ejection fraction. After completing measurements of the left ventricular volumes in the apical four-chamber view, the same process is repeated in the apical two-chamber view. Scrolling back and forth will help differentiate the true ventricular compacted myocardium from the ventricle chamber. The true compacted myocardium is differentiated from the left ventricle chamber. and the measurement will be made by tracing the border of the compacted and non-compacted myocardium of the left ventricle chamber wall. Volume measurements are again made at end diastole and end systole.
scrolling of the cine clip is performed to identify the true compacted myocardium from the non-compacted myocardium of the left ventricle wall. After measuring end diastolic volume in the apical two-chamber view, scroll to the end systole frame and measure the end systolic volume in the apical two-chamber view. Accurate measurements are needed to estimate the ejection fraction. The ejection fraction is calculated by the formula end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume divided by the end diastolic volume. In laboratories that have three-dimensional imaging capabilities, a three-dimensional volume should be acquired and used for calculation of an ejection fraction. This is an example from a patient with septal hypertrophy and a left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. The ejection fraction calculated by 3D imaging is estimated to be 65%. Systolic strain and strain rate are used to demonstrate regional and global abnormalities of left ventricular systolic function in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. This is a patient with septal hypertrophy. The apical views are used to visually assess function and measurement of an ejection fraction. Strain can also provide additional information about systolic function. In this example, note that areas of decreased strain are shown in the septal and anterior septal regions. This is another example in which the patient has an apical hypertrophy. Note how the bullseye demonstrates decreased strain in the apical segment where the hypertrophy is present. Tips for imaging the apical views. If the apical image is tilted and not in a vertical position, one will need to move more lateral on the chest and move down a rib space. This will bring the heart into a more vertical position and allow a truer image of the apical four-chamber view and allow better visualization of the apex.